In this video, we're going to introduce the last chapter of the course, Ordinary Differential Equations. So the outline of this chapter is first to look at an introduction and some examples, then look at classification of ODEs, or Ordinary Differential Equations, then look at some solution methods for initial value problems, or IVPs, and then solving systems of initial value problems, and finally looking at solution methods for boundary value problems, or BVPs. So in this video, we're going to focus on the introduction and some examples of where ordinary differential equations occur. So a differential equation is an equation that involves a derivative or derivatives of an unknown function. So for example, all of these are different differential equations. In the first case, we have the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 5y plus 3. So this is a we only have um, the first derivative, so this is a first order differential equation. You can also see that we're only taking the derivative with respect to one variable. So here we're just taking the derivative with respect to x, which means there's only one independent variable, which means that this is a ordinary differential equation. In the second example, we have d2y by dx squared plus y times d3y by dx cubed is equal to sine x. So here we have um, the highest derivative in this is a third derivative, so that means it's a third order differential equation. And you can also see that, we're, again, we're only taking the derivative with respect to one variable, which is x, which means, again, it is an ordinary differential equation. In the third example, you can see that we have partial 2t by partial x squared plus partial 2t by partial y squared is equal to k partial t by partial little t. So here, um, you can see that we are taking the derivative with respect to uh, different variables, namely x, y, and t. And so this, big, this function big T is a function of three variables, x, y, and t, and we're taking the derivative with respect to all of them in this same equation, which means that it is a partial differential equation. You can also see that the highest derivative is the second order, uh, or, or is it the second derivative, which means it's a second order partial differential equation. So you can tell the difference between the ordinary differential equation in terms of notation um, and the partial differential equation typically by the, the form of the D. So ordinary differential equations tend to use uh, just a regular um, D, where partial differential equations use this Greek letter uh, del. So these are all examples of differential equations. Now, ordinary differential equations are equations where the unknown function depends on a single variable. So, for example, y is a function of only x. So, the term ordinary indicates that there is only one independent variable um, that appears in the equations. Whereas partial differential equations, or PDEs, are equations where the unknown function depends on more than one variable. So, y, for example, could be a function of both x and t. And in this course, we're only going to consider ordinary differential equations. So ODEs appear naturally in almost all engineering applications. So in this uh, introductory chapter we're, or section, we're going to discuss some examples uh, focusing on Newton's laws of motion and dynamics examples and, and specifically vibrations, um, looking at beam deflection, looking at some growth and decay, and then discussing some examples with electrical capacitors and inductors. So first let's consider Newton's second law of motion. Um, so basically F is equal to MA. So one of the most ubiquitous examples of ODEs is Newton's second law of motion, which relates the second derivative of the position of a particle, which is the acceleration, to the applied force on the particle. So M d2x by, d, by dt squared is equal to f, where f can be a function of both x and t, where x is, would, is presumed to be a position, and t is, a, is the time. So this, of course, is just another way to write f is equal to ma, which appears over and over in, um, in all sorts of mechanical engineering applications and as well as other engineering applications, uh, specifically looking at dynamics. 
So for an example, um, we can consider a free vibration response of a spring mass system. So we have this um, mass connected to a spring um, undergoing um, free vibrations with the coordinate x. So if you go through the process to write the equations of motion for this, you end up with um, one of the things that you need to include is the, the spring force. So the spring force, assuming it's a linear elastic spring, the force in the spring is directly proportional to uh, the position with this proportionality constant k, which is the, the spring constant. So fk is equal to kx. And when you go through the um, free body diagram and writing your equations of motion, you end up with this ordinary differential equation m d2x by dt squared plus kx is equal to zero or ma is e plus kx is equal to zero. And you'll study this uh, extensively when you take vibrations. Um, so here x is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. Now the explicit solution for uh, an ordinary differential equation such as this is given as shown here. So x of t is equal to v naught over the square root of k over m times sine square root of k over mt plus x naught cosine square root of k over mt. Where here we've, we've plugged in some values for the uh, various constants that appear in the explicit solution. So um, specifically in a vibration system, x naught and v naught are the initial position and velocity of, for the mass. And square root of k over m is the natural frequency of the system, which is typically denoted as p or omega n. So this um, equation describes the oscillatory behavior of the mass with respect to time. And we get something that looks like this for free vibration response, where the initial conditions are given as this v naught, the initial velocity, and x naught, the initial position. And this is the position x with respect to time. Another example, um, we can add damping to the system. Uh, so where a viscous damper has the, the damping force directly proportional to the velocity. So Fc is equal to Cv, which is equal to C uh, dx dt. So plugging this into our free body diagram and our, our equations of motion, we end up with an ordinary differential equation of the form here. So m d2x by dt squared plus c dx by dt plus kx is equal to zero. And we can uh, solve this differential equation and we get um, the response as shown here. So x of t is equal to this e to the minus zeta pt, which is a exponential decay term, plus um, our oscillatory behavior again, where um, the, the coefficients of our sine and our cosine are related to the initial conditions as well as some other parameters in the system. So again, here, so here zeta is the damping ratio of the system, and p again is the natural frequency, which is equal to the square root of k over m, and x naught and v naught are the initial conditions. So for the free vibration response of a damped system, we get this exponential decay of our oscillatory behavior as shown here. So, and again, we're looking at um, this, our differential equation describes our system and the solution of it gives us the position as a function of time. And this is essentially what we're, we're uh, modeling here where x, the black one is the undamped system and the blue one is a damped system as an example. And we get um, the same form of equations for a pendulum system as well. Another example where we get um, ordinary differential equation is in beam deflection. So the deflection of an Euler Bernoulli beam follows the equation EI uh, d power 4y divided by dx4 is equal to q. So here y is the dependent variable which describes the deflection uh, in the vertical direction when our system is shown as drawn here, and x is the independent variable which describes the position along the length of the beam. 
and E is the Young's modulus of the beam, I is the cross-sectional moment of area, or moment of inertia, which is also called the second moment of area, and Y is the beam's deflection, and Q is an applied distributed load on the beam, and X, again, is the position along the beam's length. So you'll study this more in your strength of materials courses. It was a very common um, differential equation that appears in engineering applications. So for example, um, if you have a beam of length L that's fixed at both ends, if the deflection and rotation at both ends are equal to zero, uh, so y of zero and y of L is equal to the um, first derivative of y at both evaluated at L and at zero, are all equal to zero, and if the distributed load Q is a constant, then the deflection of the beam has the form shown here. Another example we can look at is growth and decay. So if x is the number of organisms at any time t, and if the growth of the number depends on the number that is already here, then the ordinary differential equation that describes this uninhibited growth is given uh, as shown here. So dx by dt is equal to kx. So basically the, um, the growth is related to the number that we already have with this proportionality constant k. So here x is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. So this um, solution to this would describe x or the number of organisms as a function of time. So a k is greater than zero is a positive constant um, and time is the independent variable while the dependent variable is the number of organisms which is x as a function of time. So the general solution of this equation has the form x is equal to c some constant c times e to the power kt um, where C is a constant that depends on the initial conditions. So for example, if the initial condition is such that x of 0, so x at time 0, we start with a number of organisms, then the solution has the form x is equal to a e to the power kt. Um, we can also look at decay. So if the rate of decrease or decay of a quantity is a function of the amount available, then the uninhibited decay can be described by the equation dy by dt is equal to minus hy, where y is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable, and h is a positive constant, but notice that we have um, the negative here, meaning that it is the, the amount of the quantity is decreasing with time. Um, so time is, again, the independent variable, and the dependent variable is the quantity y of t. So the general solution to, equation, uh, to this equation has the form y is equal to c e to the power of minus kt, and c is a constant dependent on the initial conditions. So again, if the initial condition is such that y at time 0 is equal to a, then the solution has the form y is equal to a e to the minus ht. And a classical uh, predator-prey model, which is also the lotka volterra equations, combines these two behaviors. So basically, um, if we can assume that the uninhibited growth of the population of rabbits, for example, assuming no predators, follows the growth equations, and then the rate of change of rabbits, dr by dt, is equal to kr. So the number, the, the rate of, of increase of rabbits is related to the number of rabbits that we already have. Um, and the natural decline of the population of foxes, assuming no food supply, uh, follows the decay equation. So the rate of change of foxes is equal to um, uh, minus hf. Now we can um, combine these assuming that the populations can interact with each other by defining this number of encounters rf. So now the population of rabbits follows um, their growth, so dr by dt is equal to kr minus some, some uh, constant times the number of interactions with the foxes. And the population of foxes um, follows their decline plus some constant times the number of interactions with rabbits, assuming that the foxes um, eat the rabbits. Then we can combine these um, in a system of, of ordinary differential equations that describes this classical predator-prey model. And you can take a look at the, the links here to learn more about this. And 
another example um, occurs in electrical capacitors and inductors. So simple electrical circuits are composed of three typical components, resistances, capacitors, and inductors. So the relationship between the voltage drop VR across a resistance and the current IR passing through it is given by the relationship VR is equal to R IR, where R is the electrical resistance. A capacitor has the relationship between the current passing through it, IC, and the rate of change of the voltage drop across it, VC. So IC is equal to C, D, VC by DT, where C is the capacitance. And an inductor has the relationship between the voltage drop across it, VI, and the rate of change of the current that passes through it, II, where, um, so VI is equal to L, DI, DT, where L is the inductance. So when the elements in a circuit are combined, uh, ordinary differential equations are, are generated with T being the independent variable and V and I being the dependent variables. So these are just a few examples of where ordinary differential equations occur naturally in, um, in uh, engineering and, and other examples or other applications. Um, but there are many other examples of ordinary differential equations as well. And you will encounter them as you go through um, your other your your courses and and throughout your career